Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. Noah's Ark What was the real Noah's Ark like? How many animals did the Ark carry? Was there a global flood? Here are answers to these questions and more from the Ark Encounter. The Real Noah's Ark The Ark Encounter in Northern Kentucky is a life-sized reconstruction of Noah's Ark. But what about the original Ark? What did it look like? How many animals did it carry? Why did Noah build it? Why do we find so many ancient flood myths? Overview of Noah's Ark Noah's Ark was a massive ship, built at God's command, that saved Noah, his family, and representatives of every kind of land-dependent, air-breathing animal from the global flood that took place over 4,300 years ago. The Ark was 510 feet long, 85 feet wide, and 51 feet high, and it housed the several thousand animals God brought to Noah. The global flood lasted about one year. The Ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat, Genesis 8-4, and Noah's family, with all the animals that were saved from the flood, eventually spread throughout the world. What did Noah's Ark look like? Genesis describes the construction of the Ark in three verses. Make yourself an Ark of gopher wood. Make room rooms in the Ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it, the length of the Ark 300 cubits, its breadth 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark, and finish it to a cubit above, and set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. Genesis 6 14-16 To understand the actual size of the ark, it's important to know what a cubit is. A cubit is an ancient measurement of length based on the distance from the elbow to the tip of the longest finger. The actual length of a cubit varied between different ancient groups of people. Though the ark's cubit length is uncertain, it may well have been one of the long or royal cubits, about 20.4 to 20.6 inches, since many ancient structures were built according to long cubits. If so, the ark was actually bigger than the size described in most books today, which frequently mention a shorter cubit, if they even bother to try to be accurate. Based on a royal cubit on the short end of the spectrum, 20.4 inches, the ark would have been 510 feet long, 85 feet wide, and 51 feet high. Why did God tell Noah to build the ark? The Bible tells us why God instructed Noah to build the ark. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Genesis 6 11-13 Ever since Adam's sin, the world had grown increasingly more rebellious. Because of the corruption and violence, God said he would destroy man and all land-dwelling, air-breathing animals on the earth. But Noah found favor with God, Genesis 6 8, so God had mercy on mankind by saving righteous Noah and his family from the impending judgment upon the earth. For more information on why Noah built the ark, check out Why Build the Ark. Did you know there are over 200 myths from all over the world about a major flood? Since the Bible is God's word, we can know that the true account was recorded by Moses and is found in Genesis 6-9. The many flood myths are retellings of the real event that have been distorted through centuries of passing down information. The earliest records of the event date back two millennia before Jesus was born. Some of these traditions are older than Moses's writings, but that only confirms that these tablets were written earlier, not that the contents were original or correct. Where is the real Noah's Ark today? In the past century, dozens of individuals have claimed to have located the Ark. Most of these modern searches have focused on Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey. In 1949, photographs of the northwest side of Mount Ararat were taken by a United States intelligence agency. A large structure can be seen jutting out of the ice and snow. However, the object and the images may be nothing more than a natural rock formation. George Hagopian claimed that when he was a young boy in 1908, his uncle took him up Mount Ararat to the Aura Gorge area. 
Hagopian said they found a large ship, and he walked on its roof. At least a dozen expeditions have explored the Aura Gorge since then, but to date, none of these adventurers has found the remains of Noah's Ark. Another proposed location is the Durupaner Formation. This arc-shaped formation lies approximately 15 miles from the summit of Montana Ararat. It was popularized by Ron Wyatt, who claimed to have found numerous artifacts in the vicinity to corroborate his claims. Often heralded as the remains of Noah's Ark, the Durupaner site appears to be just one of many similar-looking geologic formations in this region of Turkey. A team, team of evangelical Christian explorers claim they've found the remains of Noah's Ark beneath snow and volcanic debris on Turkey's Mount Ararat map. But some archaeologists and historians are taking the latest claim that Noah's Ark has been found about as seriously as they have passed ones which is to say not very. I don't know of any expedition that ever went looking for the Ark and didn't find it, said Paul Zemanski, an archaeologist specializing in the Middle East at Stony Brook University in New York State. Turkish and Chinese explorers from a group called Noah's Ark Ministries International made the latest discovery claim Monday in Hong Kong, where the group is based. It's not 100% that it is Noah's Ark, but we think it is 99.9% .9 that this is it, Young Wingchung, a filmmaker accompanying the explorers, told the Daily Mail. Noah's Ark location in Turkey a secret. The team claims to have found in 2007 and 2008 seven large wooden compartments buried at 13,000 feet, for 1,000 meters, above sea level, near the peak of Mount Ararat. They returned to the site with a film crew in October 2009. Many Christians believe the mountain in Turkey is the final resting place of Noah's Ark, which the Bible says protected Noah, his family, and pairs of every animal species on Earth during a divine deluge that wiped out most of humanity. The structure is partitioned into different spaces, said Noah's Ark Ministries International Team member Manif A. I. Ewan in a statement. We believe that the wooden structure we entered is the same structure recorded in historical accounts. The team says radiocarbon dated wood taken from the discovery site, whose location they're keeping secret for now shows the purported Ark is about 4,800 years old, which coincides roughly with the time of Noah's flood implied by the Bible. Noah's Ark would weigh, way, way too young. Skeptic skepticism of the new Noah's Ark claim extends to at least one scholar who interprets the Bible literally. Biologist Todd Wood is director of the Center for Origins Research at Bryan College in Tennessee, which pursues biology in a creationist framework. As a creationist, Wood believes God created Earth and its various life forms out of nothing roughly 6,000 years ago. If you accept a young chronology for the Earth, then radiocarbon dating has to be reinterpreted, because the method often yields dates much older than 6,000 years, Wood said. Radiocarbon dating estimates the ages of organic objects by measuring the radioisotope carbon-14, which is known to decay at a set rate over time. The method is generally thought to reach its limit with objects about 60,000 years old. Earth is generally thought to be about 4.5 billion years old. Across the board, radiocarbon dates need to be recalibrated, Wood believes, to reflect shorter time frames. Given this perceived overestimation in radiocarbon dating, the Wood the Noah's Ark Ministries International Team found should have a traditional radiocarbon date of several tens of thousands of years if the Wood is truly 4,800 years old, Wood said. I'm really, really skeptical that this could possibly be Noah's Ark, he added. The Wood date is way, way, way too young. Wood thinks Noah's Ark will never be found, because it would have been prime timber after the flood, he said. If you just got off the Ark, and there's no trees, what are you going to build your house out of? You've got a huge boat made of wood, so let's use that, he said. So I think it got torn apart and scavenged for building material basically. Noah's Ark found in right country, on wrong mountain? Another reason scholars are skeptical of the latest Noah's Ark discovery claim is that Genesis the first book of the Bible never specifies which peak the vessel supposedly landed on in Turkey. The whole notion is odd, because the Bible tells you the Ark landed somewhere in Urartu, an ancient kingdom in eastern Turkey, but it's only later that people identified Mount Ararat with Urartu, said Jack Sasson, a professor of Jewish and Biblical studies at Vanderbilt University in Tennessee. Stony Brook's Zemanski agreed.
Nobody associated that mountain with the Ark until the 10th century BC, he said, adding that there's no geologic evidence for a mass flood in Turkey around 4,000 years ago. The Noah's Ark Ministry's international explorers are playing in a very different ballpark than the rest of us, Zemanski said. They're playing without any concern for the archaeological, historical and geological records. Better explanations for Noah's Ark structure? Even if the Noah's Ark Ministry's international team did find a wooden structure, or even a boat on Mount Ararat, there are other explanations for what the structure might be. For example, it could be a shrine constructed by early Christians to commemorate the site where they believed Noah's Ark should be, Zemanski said. Even in that speculative case, it wouldn't be 4,000 years old. The Bible hadn't even been written yet, he said. Bible scholar Sasson said he thinks biblical writers intended the story of Noah's Ark to be allegorical, not a true recounting of historical events. By presenting a scenario in which humanity is punished for its wickedness, they were trying to draw us to the notion of a God who asks us to be acceptable, Sasson said. You went to consider Noah's Ark? On its website, Noah's Ark Ministries International says the Turkish government plans to apply to the United Nations to put the Noah's Ark Discovery Site on the UNESCO World Heritage List, a designation given to places of special cultural or physical significance. But the agency hasn't received any official requests from Turkey for the inscription of Noah's Ark into the list, UNESCO spokesperson Roni Aimlon said in an email. Such a move would take time, Aimlon added. This cannot be done overnight. Thank you for watching see you again for another interesting facts and amazing stories and also please like and subscribe.